Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now we've come to the conclusion of the fruit of the Spirit. And by now we should know the fruit by memory from the repetition. Now one last time. We've gone over love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, or gentleness. And we've come to the last fruit of the Spirit, self-control. Now we have learned, I hope, in these past lessons on the fruit of the Spirit, that a change in the character of a believer in Jesus Christ will be evident. A new creature a change in existence quite different from that of the unbeliever that exhibits the works of the flesh. They make their own way. The believer becomes fruit of the Spirit and the character change comes forth from the workings internally of the Holy Spirit. It is God the Father at work in the existence of the believer doing His will and work for, uh, for His good pleasure. His good pleasure through humanity. And self-control, well, it's the ability to control yourself and the conscientious ability to deny the works of the flesh. That's just what it is. Now, in re the reality, in the reality of there's a supreme creator, in the reality that there is a designer of humanity that has been formed in the womb to serve a God, the Father, and to hold this God, which is Jesus Christ's moral standards. Self-control? Well, there is none. There is none. The jails and prisons are at capacity. The city court systems are, are, are extremely busy and they're very lucrative. It's a business. And look at the conduct, conduct of the secular religious folk in general and the supposed houses of prayer and the houses of God. And look how the worship services are ran. They are entertainment clubs that are for-profit corporations. Look across this country, a church on every street corner. You think you would, you, you would think there'd be just a, a little jail like an Andy Griffith jail for a few unbelievers from town to town with all these churches and religious folk. There'd just be a little old jail with a Barney. But nuh uh There's no self-control. You need big facilities. And you'd think there'd be no need of rescue missions for the homeless or soup kitchens because of all the mass population of the zealous for the Lord religious people that would be tending to these poor. The behavior of the secular religious, they, they lack self-control themselves, or these things wouldn't be. And there are churchgoers in prison, people that wear crosses around their neck. They say they go to church every Sunday or Saturday. They say they were baptized and they're going to heaven, but they're in prisons too. There are churchgoers in the court system because the evidence of self-control reflects societies nationwide that haven't generally repented and turned to Jesus as a pathetic sinner in need of a Savior. There's no God consciousness. None. Humanity is naturally an adversary to God, born in rebellion against God. And the world, is, it's, it's out of control, and it always has been. The believer and servant of Jesus, or Yahusha, however you prefer to pronounce the Savior of mankind's name in the language you speak, the believer is to combat and stand against the character and behavior of this world spirit by exercising self-control. It takes a moral sense and an awareness of the power of restraint against desires and passions of the flesh that allow the representation of the Savior we claim to serve to be a reflection of our action through the lack of self-control, the lack of denying ourselves, the lack of 
abstinence, the lack of spiritual righteousness, self-control. The lack of self-control has been a trait of the sinner since the fall in the garden. And we all fall short. And people claim they have their mind. They have their mind, the adversary, all under control. Let's go here to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. For this very reason, we make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whatever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So every member of the world's society... Every individual person has the tool of discernment and discern in different manners. We all discern differently. And why is that? Why do we discern different manners so differently? Well, in my opinion, the object being discerned, it's filtered through your eyes. It's laid out on the table of the mind it's discussed at length between the soul and the spirit and then that heart. The heart processes and makes the final decision. And the health of one's soul and spirit are significant in making human decisions. What does the soul and spirit feed upon? Pornography? NASCAR? Clothing trends? Hollywood movies? The NFL, the Word of God, living in that Word? What does that soul and spirit feed on? What kind of people do we surround ourselves with? Do those people still have a natural heart? Or do they have a brand new heart? The God-given heart and spirit that Ezekiel spoke about. We have conflict. Satan, the adversary, in the mind, body, soul, and spirit. And if it is unhealthy, you'll reflect the health of your soul and spirit. Ezekiel 16.30 How sick is your heart, says the Lord God, that you did all these things, the deeds of a brazen whore, a boldly unrestrained whore, we're all familiar with the verse, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we all have internal, an internal processing plant within us that operates in the, the matter of one second. If we are to exhibit self-control at any given moment, we have one second to respond. Making a family decision, answering someone uh, in a conversation or a debate. There's really no big pause you, you, to sit and ponder thoughts in a conversation. There's a split second to react and answer with or without self-control. And at that time, our almost instantaneous reply will be a reflection of our spiritual health. Now, when living in the study of Scripture is a way of life and meditate on the current state of your life and the time and season of which we live, if you can't expect anything to be different, well, or, or, or try to understand the ancient days to be any less evil, because you won't. Evil and the lack of self-control has had impacts on life and has been the same from the early chapters of Genesis right down to today in 2019. The only difference are the creature comforts 
the conveniences and technological advances. It's the only differences. And if we're, and if we're to uh, be really sincerely honest with ourselves, we will see our current state. We will see in us the manifestation of the flesh producing immorality, gossip, drunkenness, the works of the flesh. We'll see in ourselves the works of the flesh, or we will see God working in and through us the fruit of the Spirit as our identity. More love, more joy, greater peace. Christ representing self-control. That'll all be outward traits of ourselves or the works of the flesh. And we'll be among society as a separated people and we'll probably be condemned in certain ways for it because moral character and submission to Jesus, it rattles the cages of the heathen because anyone in a crowd that has any sense can determine a weed from a flower. Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Against such things there is no law. All through the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul was writing to people being hoodwinked by the Pharisees, obviously rejecting the Savior of mankind, Jesus Christ. Paul's writing to the ones wanting to be under the supervision of the law. Now, Paul's entire letter to the church in Galatia was combating the preachers who were pointing them back to the law. That all the, that Christ entails was not enough. And I don't have enough time to finish this. So the next lesson will be exclusively dedicated to against such things there is no law. Because it will take every bit of 15 minutes, if not more, to explain that. So I apologize for running out of time. I thought this was going to be the last lesson of the fruit of the Spirit so we could move along to some other books. And I haven't quite figured out which book I want to do yet. But there's a lot of nonsense in that book of Revelation. I tell you, these churches are Hollywood movie scripts. And they're making a killing. They're making a fortune. I really would like to do Revelation, and that would probably take three or four years. I just may do it. I don't know yet. Anyway, till next time.